All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, at one point last year during the playoffs, it looked as if the Houston Rockets may have had a chance to score the upset against the Golden State Warriors, which would have meant that finally Mr. Chris Paul, as well as James Harden, would have reached the mountaintop because I have little to no doubt in my mind that they would have made very short work of the Cleveland Cavaliers as the Golden State Warriors did. Well, as we know, it was not in the cards for them to win a championship last year. And sometimes you only get that one opportunity. It's like the Buffalo Bills. They talk about the Buffalo Bills went to four straight Super Bowls, but they only had a real chance to win one, that being the first one. And Scott Norwood missed a 47-yard field goal. Very makeable, but he missed it. And they never had a real opportunity after that because the teams that they faced the years after that, the, the Redskins in the 92 Super Bowl and then the Dallas Cowboys in 93 and 94, just totally mollywopped them. Mollywopped them. And nobody truly remembers that because they only had one real chance to win. That was in their first Super Bowl appearance against the Giants in 91. It seems like it's going to be a similar situation for the Houston Rockets. Because as I observe, they do not look like the championship contending team this year. They look like another team that's going to be a bit too small. And now the other teams in the West especially have caught up to them in regards to three-point shooting. They still have James Harden, who is an offensive nuclear bomb waiting to happen. He can get you 50 points and 10 assists on any given night. But is that going to be enough? Because it appears as if Chris Paul is starting to diminish more and more every time I see him. And when a player constantly has these leg injuries and these, these leg issues, these leg maladies in their early to mid-30s, it's not going to bode well for them in the long run. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Well, I'm no math major, but I'm pretty sure that if this holds, it will lead to some serious disappointment, nowhere more so than in Houston. The Rockets are in 13th place. They have lost three straight, and this is despite getting a bludgeoning performance out of James Harden last night. Not only did Harden drop 54 points, but Eric Gordon scored 36. That made them the first starting backcourt to score 90 in a game since back in 2006. Say it with me, Kobe Bryant scoring his 81. And, you know, let... Yes, Kobe had his 81 in his 666th game. Isn't that something? Hmm. Seems as if somebody turned up the knob on Kobe all the way to the top for that game. And <laughs> once again, if your backcourt scores that many points and you still lose, that means that you were playing no defense whatsoever. And I'm referring to the Houston Rockets. Letting Smush Parker chip in for 13. And yet last night, the Rockets, they still lost. In fact, last night's game was a pretty good microcosm of the Rockets' season. This is a team so top-heavy that when the slightest breeze comes by, like, say, an injury or a suspension, the roster just can't handle it. And the Stars trying to get the load, well, they're carrying it and they're exhausted. Last night. Daniel House, a player the Rockets had called up from the G League and who had never practiced with the team, played more than 28 minutes for them. That spells desperation. That also spells we never should have let Trevor Ariza go. We never should have let Luke and Bob Mute go. A team like the Houston Rockets, who are so dependent on exemplary offensive one-on-one -on -one basketball play, they need to have certain specialists on the defensive end who can give their offensive players a rest on the defensive end. And now with no Luke and Bob Mute, no Trevor Ariza, of course that means that James Harden and some of their other players like Eric Gordon, they actually have to play on both ends of the court. And they don't want to have to do that. See, when you have great defensive players, it actually makes your bad defensive players better because there's less pressure on them to stop their man one-on-one -on -one, and then they can become help defenders. Rookie Gary Clark, who was also on a two-way contract, played 19 minutes and yeah, we all expect GM Daryl Morey to make some moves once more players become tradable on December 15th and some more moves once the buyout market <laughs> materializes. But those are traditionally the kind of changes that can help tweak a good team into a contender. The Rockets are still working to find good. And well, we are a quarter of the way through the season. A lot has already happened. Time's ticking. So, Paul, we have been reluctant to ring the warning alarm on any of these teams saying, oh, it's still early, small sample size, we're not that kind of show. <laughs> but is it still too soon to panic about the Rockets' rocky start, or is it getting to be time to panic about no, the Rockets' rocky no, start? Yeah. Well, it's a bit too soon, just because it's so early in the season. But when you look at how they're playing, at least when you look at the Boston Celtics, they're still one of the top teams in the league in defense. So you say to yourself, well, 
as long as you're playing great defense, that means that you're always going to be hanging around. Once they start to improve their offensive execution, that's when they're going to start to string wins together. Now, in the case of the Houston Rockets, the Houston Rockets, they're like, you know, metaphorically speaking, they're like that heavyweight boxer who's always trying to get into slugfest. He's going to win some. He's going to knock out his opponent sometimes, and sometimes he's going to get knocked out. Great teams cannot always be getting into slugfest. What great teams do is they get a lot of 12-round unanimous decisions where they shut out their opponent or they get early stoppages because of their skill level, not because of how hard they punch. The Rockets at one point last, last year, they looked like Mike Tyson in the mid-80s. They were getting early stoppages. They were just intimidating their opponent. And they also had a high skill level where they were not getting hit in the ring. We're not seeing that this year. They look punch drunk from last year's Western Conference Finals. And every game is a slugfest. Panic. You got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Because as long as you have James Harden, Clint Capella playing at a high level, they have to get CP back healthy. You got to give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, James Harden is an MVP caliber player. He was an MVP last year. So you have great players like that. You don't quit on them that, that soon. You know, he can carry his team to a playoff bird. He's that good. So it's not, you don't have to worry about the Rockets right now. Well, you know what, Paul? The truth. <laughs> That's the main problem right there. This idiot is too concerned about his new stupid ass celebration than he is about the team winning. Now, every time he goes to the basket and dunks on somebody, he acts like he has a nosebleed. It's like, give me a break. <laughs> you better start worrying about these guys right now. Something ain't. Even in his celebrations, he's flopping. Ain't right, and we so talked about this right. last year mm -hmm. during the summer mm -hmm. that when Trevor Ariza left, right. this team was gonna have problems, mm -hmm. and they are having big time problems on the defensive end. We know they can score, right. but last year they had a defensive identity. This year they don't. CB being hurt is is obviously something that hurts them as a basketball team. But overall, if I'm in Houston. I'm panicking. When you bring up a guy from the G League and you play him 28 minutes, that's panic. <laughs> what that also means is that they don't really run a real system. Because for you to be able to plug in a G League player and give him that many minutes, all you're telling him is just play. Act like you're out there on the blacktop. We don't run real sets. So, you know, just do whatever. When you get the basketball, if you're open, shoot it. Guard your man, so on and so forth. That's why the Rockets, they, they just don't have the basketball IQ. To, to beat smart teams. Once again, had, had Iguodala not gone down with that injury in game three, I believe it was, they would have lost in five. That is panicking. Okay, so right now, they are panicking. They're trying to find some answers, and you hope they get it together because I think we all know that this team is a, a team that can flat out play. They were a team that had Golden State on the ropes last year, but right now, if I'm in Houston, yeah, I'm starting it's to panic really a little sure bit. They don't have the depth. Well, that's, well, that's for sure. So they had an I mean, injury during the, the game. Stars. Right. No, and you're they had right. an injury Absolutely. during the game that led to him playing 28 minutes. Right. But still, an, well, an injury during the game shouldn't lead to someone who's never practiced with the team playing right. 28 minutes. And, and look, you said, Paul, oh, when CP gets healthy. I love CP and what he so can do for this do. team. We all do. But don't heal as fast that, is gonna, like, that is part of the bargain with him at this age. We talked right. about this a lot. This is a guy who plays at 120%. So his body goes through ups and downs through the season. That is. It also doesn't help that he's utilizing those performance-enhancing drugs, allegedly. That's going to lead to a lot of tendon issues because the muscles are just filled with a bunch of water weight. The muscles are growing faster than the tendons can grow. That's why you see a lot of these guys in the NBA, especially when they get into their mid-30s, they have these issues with their hamstrings a lot of times or with their biceps. I remember Al Horford, he tore both pectoral muscles like... When you see guys tearing both their pecs, that's normally because of performance-enhancing drugs, allegedly. Okay, and uh, CP3 is already on record as not wanting the NBA to outlaw or to ban performance-enhancing drugs like HGH. Why is that? Because it helps these players recover from injuries. Always going to be part of this equation for the Rockets at this point in his career. Yes. And, and I, gosh, I, I'm I am worried sort of about the the mix and the recipe because you mentioned Trevor Ariza. Mm -hmm. And I know people look at the Phoenix right now and they're like, it's not like Trevor Ariza is making the Suns burn up the standings, right? And he, his defensive numbers aren't great in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. But, but y'all know it's all guy. about the he mix, right? Me it's about the mix. About this all the time. He chemistry. Is a glue guy. Yeah. Right? Chemistry, is, missing that. Right? chemistry is so important in the NBA. It's when you put all those pieces oh, together, right? Oh, it's so right? important, yeah. And so. they're missing that. And it just, it just doesn't look like the same team. No, it doesn't. You know, no. from, from a, a team that really seemed to be together and focused and liked they each other last year. They're missing that swagger. They don't have that swagger. Or
Really what they're missing are those guys who are willing to do the dirty work. They're not going to go in between the legs 500 times and then pull up for three. Or go to the basket and dunk on somebody and act like they have a nosebleed. They're missing the guy who's going to D up on the opposing team's best wing and do his best. That's what they're missing. All that chemistry, and I think that's really hurting them. Well, we're going to play something, nothing, everything later in the show. And I'm kind of between you two because I think this is something. Not okay. nothing, okay. not everything. We'll keep watching them. I'm <laughs> But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things go with the Rockets. As of right now, I still believe that they're going to make the playoffs. I think they have too much talent on the team, especially in regards to their top two players. When you have a James Harden and a CP3, you expect them to make the playoffs at the very least. But it wouldn't shock me if they go out in any round, the first round or the second round of the playoffs, should they make it there. So peace.